Picture this. You're exploring ancient ruins made of yellow and stone brick. You see ancient drawings on the walls. You also hear the noise of running water. It seems peaceful here. You close your eyes and you focus on the echoing sound of rushing water. You begin to walk, lost in thought, as you take everything in. You step on wet stone, and the next thing you know, you're flying downward on a huge water slide. You try to grab onto something for dear life, but the rushing water and the slippery rock leaves you unable to do anything but struggle in vain. You see what might be a deep pool of water below coming closer and closer. In spite of your panic, you try to take one last deep breath before you're plunged into the water below. Although things are a bit darker now, you can still see. The stone takes on a greenish tint. You admire how the water changed the color of the stone. But then you remember, you need air. You try to swim or float up, but to no avail. You feel your body trying to gasp for air. The panic returns. Your heart races and your eyes begin to sting. Your body tries to force you to breathe, knowing all you'll suck in is water. Your mind races. Will you ever find a way out? Will you dine down here? Will anyone ever find you? The urge to breathe gets stronger and stronger, and you can feel a tiny bit of water make it into your mouth. Then you spot something odd. Giant air bubbles that are floating up toward the surface. In desperation, you put your face to the bubble and you inhale deeply. You want to cough, but you got the oxygen you needed so badly. You find more of these bubbles and make your way through the ruins. You have a few close calls with spike traps, rotating spiky balls, spears, and even fireballs that somehow are able to exist underwater. You think back for a second to the serene environment it appeared to be when you first entered and how you feel it betrayed you. Eventually, you find your way out of the water as you climb up, once again your topside. Tears of joy roll down your face once you realize you're on solid ground once again and no longer underwater. You now have a new appreciation for the air you used to take for granted and a solid foundation beneath your feet. You regain your composure and with a deep sigh, <sighs> cautiously march out of the ruins. Now, if that story didn't give you anxiety, these next three acts probably will. Labyrinth Zone is one of the hardest, if not THE hardest, zone in this game. It is also where you get introduced to a cool new mechanic called Drowning. Anyone who has ever played a Sonic game is probably familiar with this lovely tune. However, before we get too deep into this deep dive, let's take a look at where else this stress-inducing zone shows up. It makes an appearance in the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, the Sonic the Hedgehog comic series, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, LEGO Dimensions, and Sonic Drift is a track named Labyrinth. It also shows up as Labyrinth in the level select screen for Sonic. Here's a couple of fun facts. Labyrinth Zone was originally going to be the second zone in a game. That's right! You would have started out with something easy like Green Hill Zone, and then been thrown into the underwater hell of Labyrinth Zone right after it, in the very beginning of the game. I bet nobody would have liked this game if they didn't change that. Good thing they did. Sonic was also supposed to have goggles for this zone, and apparently a goggle power-up. Spinning at the end of Act 1 or 2 of Labyrinth Zone would cause Sonic to fall until the game eventually crashed. Also, according to SonicFandom.com, the Nick Arcade prototype version of Sonic 2 had Labyrinth Zone, but it was later replaced with Oil Ocean Zone. If you're like me and don't like Oil Ocean, just be glad we didn't get Labyrinth Zone instead. However, 
if you want more Labyrinth Zone, you can always play the 8-bit Sonic the Hedgehog game for the Game Gear. If the 16-bit version doesn't make you rage, that one definitely will. Yikes. Now, let's take a look at the story elements real quick. After finding Dr. Robotnik at Spring Yard Zone, Sonic chases him out of the city and into ancient ruins that are partially flooded, where, of course, Robotnik has more traps waiting. Why are there so many ruins in this game? After making it to the end of the flooded ruin, Sonic catches up to Robotnik, who then tries to flee from not only Sonic, but the flooding ruins themselves as the water level rises. Robotnik does even try to fight back. He just tries to take off as fast as he can with Sonic in pursuit. After escaping the ruins, Sonic pursues the evil doctor to Starlight Zone, where once again, he gets away. Difficulty and feel. As with most things, an experienced player can traverse the zone without too many issues. However, for everyone else, including very new players, this can be a brutal zone full of lessons to learn. What's more, it's the halfway mark through the game. If you game over here, you have to start over from the beginning in the original version. However, if you're playing Origins or another version of the game, you might be able to just kind of go back onto your save and start over from the first zone of Labyrinth Zone. You could also resort to using the level select cheat, the various traps, well-placed enemies, underwater physics the player needs to adjust to, and of course, the need for air will take this beautiful zone and turn it into a watery hell for many. On the difficulty scale, I would probably give this around a 7 out of 10 for hard. It is above average for difficulty, so much so that they moved it to later on in the game. Yes, they knew this was going to suck to play. Now let's talk about the environmental hazards you will run into in this zone. So first off, we've got spikes. Yeah, that's right, those metal pointy things that stick out of the ground, and if you land on them, you lose your rings or die. Spike ball chain. Spiky ball on a chain that spins around? Not much to say here. Fireball statues. These things fire kind of like a machine gun out of the mouth of statues. Alright, maybe not quite as fast, but they shoot pretty fast. What's more, they can even fire underwater. I don't know how fireballs work underwater, but you'll have to ask Sega that one. Their placement makes them annoying, and the fire rate really makes them suck. Getting crushed. Yeah, you can get crushed here. Mm-hmm. Spears. So... Yeah, they have spears that shoot out and retract and then shoot out again. These are usually in tight hallways, so yeah, watch out. Now let's cover the enemies. There's only three enemy types in this zone, so it's pretty simple. And for the most part, they're not too much of a threat. Except for one. So the first off, you're going to run into the Burrow Bot. You'll see there's drills sticking out of the ground, and if you get too close, they just kind of jump out at you and then move around. They're not really much of a threat, and in spite of the intimidating drill on their nose, you can actually land on top of them as they jump out without taking any damage. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. Next up is Jaws, but not like the movie, fortunately. These guys just kind of swim around in the water, and they don't really do a whole lot, so yeah, they're not much of a threat. Last up, you have the Orbanaut, and these guys suck to run into in this zone, because when you get into range, they throw these spiky balls at you, and sometimes you can jump over them to avoid the spikes. Sometimes you can duck under them, although not usually, because you can't get quite low enough. And they tend to put them in tight hallways and near air bubbles where you might get hit sucking an air bubble by accident. So be careful. Once they throw all their spikes, of course, they're pretty easy to deal with, or you can just wait till they throw a couple at you and then bop them from top because they'll not be protected. Now let's take a look at Labyrinth Zone Act 1.
they start you off easy. Which is extremely kind of them because this zone has a new mechanic we have not encountered before. Drowning. You start off and right away you see water. This is where you get your feet wet before you take the plunge. You also meet your first burrow bot. You continue forward and find another one and see a shield power up. However, in the words of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. If you go right to the shield power up, you might get smashed in the face by a spinning spike ball on chain. What's more, you have to avoid it again on the way down to move forward. Make it past the ball and grab the ring box guarded by two burrow bots and hit the switch to move on. Here you have a room with some tiny bubbles on the ground. This is the first time you get to see air bubbles. Though an experienced player may be able to get through Labyrinth Zone without needing any of these, a lesser experienced player is going to be a regular visiting these areas to get some air before moving forward. After all, you only get about 30 seconds until you drown, and sometimes the air bubbles just won't cooperate and you can drown waiting for a bubble to appear. On the bright side, when you see the numbers popping up, you actually have more time than what it shows. Each number in the countdown is about 2 or 3 seconds, and you even have a few seconds after hitting zero. It sucks drowning, and unless you're familiar with the layout of the level, you don't know when you will be out of the water again. Get past the burrow bot, hit a switch, and open up a path above, and grab that ring box as well. At this point, you have your first taste of underwater exploration, but like I said, this was only a taste. Because you're going to be dropping back down into the water, and this time it will be for a bit longer. Take the plunge and meet Jaws, your new enemy. These guys aren't really too much of a threat, just more of an annoyance than anything. Once you get below, you'll see two switches. The switch on the right opens up a door and lets you continue along Route A. There's also a second switch down here. If you jump on it, a door will open up on the left that has a ring box. However, it does one other interesting thing that many may not have known about. Did you notice the platform when I showed you the level map earlier? It was missing when we jumped down here. Well, that button makes that small random platform appear up above. But how do we get back up? If you didn't already trigger it, there is a nearby platform that floats toward the top when you step on it. Time your jump right, and you can get onto the top of the next platform to the right with the downward facing spikes, and jump back up to the top. Once up top, jump on that tiny platform and it'll take you across the water onto the other side. Now of course, if you're playing Origins, you could have Tails carry you over, or you could play as Tails or Knuckles and just fly or glide over without needing to do any of this. Most people probably aren't going to be aware of this secret, however, and continue along Route A instead. Following along the path for Route A, it's simple enough. You work your way down and likely land on some more floating platforms, so make sure you get off of them or you'll get squished by the spikes up above. Get past the ball and chain and maybe grab an air bubble before making your way past some more spiky balls on a chain and soon you are back out of the water. Now you see a room with pulleys and moving platforms. Get onto the platforms and make your way to the switch to the top right and open the gate below and proceed through the area that is open. Make sure to grab that checkpoint while you're at it as well. You never know when you're going to need it. Hit a switch to open another door and continue on. Here you run into spears. There are several of them here and they're annoying. You need to get past them while they are retracted or you will get damaged. The water physics also slow things down so you'll need to be extra careful here. Again, they're ramping up the challenge since we're over halfway through the game at this point, so it's not going to get any easier. Continue up, perhaps hitting the red spring for a speed boost and make your way into another room. In the box, you have your first Orbanaut. This guy will throw his spiky balls at you and you need to avoid them. Once they're gone, you can either ignore it or destroy it. Ride the platform up toward the top, and here you'll run into statues that shoot fireballs. These guys suck. They shoot pretty quickly, and there are two of them. So, well-timed and precise jumps will be important here. 
get past these statues and continue along. The rest of the path is fairly easy and will lead you to a goalpost. Just be careful with the changing water levels and the corks. If you're on top of one and the cork floats up, you may get squished. Now, let's say you took the secret route we discussed earlier after riding across. All you do is go down the water slide and through a wavy passageway, hit a couple of switches, and a couple of bad nicks, and you would have been home free. Talk about easy street. Now that you know what to expect from this new zone, you head into Act 2 for some more underwater action. If you didn't get your emeralds yet and have 50 rings, or are playing the Origins versions and have a 7th emerald enabled, take a shot at the bonus stage at the end and grab it. Now, let's take a look at Act 2. As you can see, Act 2 is pretty straightforward with only one path through the act. You step forward and deal with a burrow pot and jump over some spikes, then ride a water slide down into some water. Yes, this was the part that was the inspiration for the opening scenario. Pretty cool, huh? Make your way through and grab an invulnerability power up and book it through the area. You can pick up the ring boxes if you want, but unless you need an emerald, I wouldn't bother and take full advantage of the invulnerability. Maybe grab a bubble on the way through though. Eventually you'll go through an area where the current forces you through a narrow hallway and into a larger room. Make your way up toward the top, maybe grabbing the shield and ring box if you want them. Make sure that you do grab the one in the middle of the room because there's a switch hidden under it that opens the path forward. Grab the checkpoint and be careful going for the invulnerability power-up. It's guarded by another spiky ball on a chain that's rotating around. Don't let it hit you in the face. Go past the spears and dive like you've never dove before. Hit a switch and make it past the Norbanaut, and then stand on falling blocks to continue along. Get past some jaws and another Orbanaut, and if you do it fast enough, you can actually get pretty far without any issues. Get past another rotating spike ball on a chain and Orbanaut. Just be careful with those Orbanauts. If you end up not moving fast enough, you will have to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge to avoid these spikes they throw at you. What's worse is you don't have a lot of room to work with here, especially with the last Orbanaut that's right after the spike ball. And watch out for those air bubbles. One badly timed air bubble could get you hit, and if you aren't careful, you might lose your rings. Also, who doesn't hate getting an air bubble at the wrong time? Go into the next room and work your way up to the top and finish the act. Like I said, it really is straightforward. If you didn't get your emeralds yet and you have 50 rings, or are playing Origins and you need 7 emeralds to get super, take a shot at the bonus stage at the end and grab it. So now that we're finished with Act 2, let's take a look at Act 3. Act 3, of course, is the final act of this watery zone, and you now have two acts under your belt, and it's time to get out of here. You start out with four burrow bots and then a slip and slide. What's more, this one never ends. You slide down off the bottom of the level and come flying down from the top as you may have seen from the level map. If you jump at the right time, you can get a shield power up. However, you have a mandatory jump right afterward that you need to make that has a switch you can press to open up a passageway in the slope across from you. Jump through the water and into the opened path and hit another switch to drop down. Hit yet another switch and open a path that goes further down. Yes, they really love their switches in Labyrinth Zone. Just be careful because there is a spike ball on a chain spinning around above the switch. 
If you haven't figured it out by now, they want you to move slowly and exercise caution in this zone. Which really sucks because it's underwater and you can drown. You have reduced movement and jump speed along with many traps placed in the pathways and of course a time limit due to the drowning mechanic and these things together make for one heck of a challenge. Really if you think about it. In a lot of ways Labyrinth Zone plays a lot more like Marble Zone. They both require you to be cautious and even move slowly and wait at times. Both restrict your ability to move freely and quickly. They just go about it in different ways. There's a fine line you will need to walk to survive this place. Now you have to make a choice. Continue along Route A by going forward and past the chain spiky ball, or get onto the flying platform in the middle of the spears for Route B. Route A is longer and will take you past a spear, several spikes, and up around by some spinning spike balls on a chain with some more spikes. Just be careful and take your time here. Unless, of course, you don't care about losing your rings. The next room has pulleys that move platforms clockwise. If you ride the platforms to the left, there's a small open spot in the wall you can jump into that's hiding four ring boxes and a one-off. You can ride the platform up and to the right to get invulnerability, and then hit the switch below and go through the open path in the floor. Hit a second switch to get through another door and continue along. You also might want to grab an air bubble at this point. Next, you go down a wavy hallway where there's another invulnerability power up to your right. Grab it, maybe an air bubble as well, and then hit another switch. Grab the checkpoint and either go straight across and deal with the Orbanaut, or you can drop down between the platforms and take your chances with the jaws below. If you have enough speed, you can just kind of run across the platforms without actually having to jump over the gaps. If you do drop down, you're going to have to hit a switch to open up a path in the floor to continue on. The next room is pretty easy. Hit the red spring to go up or grab the shield on the right. Hit the bubbles in the ring box and then take your time getting past the four rotating spike balls on a chain. Mess up and you could fall all the way down to the area below, or all the way to the very bottom where the jaws were, so be careful. I make it past the rotating spike balls on chains and you'll see pulleys and moving platforms. Ride a platform to the top and hit the switch to change the rotation to counterclockwise, and ride the platform to the other side, deal with four burrow bots, and then slide down to the next checkpoint. Now, let's say you took Route B. As I said earlier, it's a lot faster. You go through a windy hallway where you grab onto poles, use the jump button to break the pole and fly forward. Obviously you want to make sure you don't go flying into the spikes. Get past this section you'll end up in a large room. Hit the red spring and hit a switch at the top to open a door to the right. Be careful because you have an Orbanaut there in a tight hallway and air bubbles. Jump over the spiky balls or Eat the hit and continue along hitting a switch and end up in the room where the checkpoint is with corks. This is where routes B and A merge. Now this is it, the moment you've been waiting for, the end of the level. Get to the furthest most cork on the right and ride it up as the water level increases. You'll then jump up several steps and the level will wrap around. Eventually you'll be able to get a shield power up and you'll find Robotnik. However, he isn't interested in fighting you. He's trying to flee from you, and there are a plethora of traps to slow you down or stop you. You have statues that shoot fireballs and spears. What's more, the water is slowly rising. If you're playing a Sonic Origins version, Tails is probably the easiest character to use here because he can just fly and swim. Knuckles might be the hardest due to his low jump height. And you don't need to worry about hitting Robotnik here, you just have to make it to the top and open up the capsule at the end of win. If you have no rings though, just be careful not to open the capsule and run into Robotnik, because it will kill you, and then you have to do that whole part over again from the checkpoint. I tried to make it work for me so I could demonstrate it in the video here, but I just could not get the timing right, but I have done it before in the past. Now you're done with Labyrinth Zone and on the Starlight Zone. 
Pat yourself on the back because you just got through one of the hardest zones in the game. What's more, there's only two zones left and the next one is going to go by lightning fast.